Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. This uh, Walteresia aegypti or Sinai Desert Cobra or Desert Black Cobra, whatever you want to call the poor guy. Uh, come on, bud. Come on. Come on, dude. Come on, you're okay. You're okay. Um, you threw up your dinner last night. That was very sad. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to move him up to this cage and we're going to try to, uh, uh, you know, get some meds into him, some flagell and some pancure uh, via a small rodent something that would be easier to digest and maybe he would keep down now you know I didn't mention it in the other video that I shot last night but uh, I had seen him gagging and retching even without feeding him so uh, the fact that he tossed up the uh, the food items last night, come on bud, uh, was not a terribly big surprise. Now, you know, look at look at his head. His head is a total different shape than uh, uh, most cobras, you see. A very distinctive uh, uh, face, huh? Come on. What we're going to do, bud, is we're going to we're going to put you in the can for a minute or two. And we're going to get a weight so we can give you the proper amount of medications. Uh, and what we're going to do is if you toss your cookies, if I give you something a little later and you're in the mood, uh, we're going we're gonna to culture that and see what... Uh, well, bud, you're okay. You're okay. You're a good old boy. You're a good old boy. Come on. Come on, I know you don't want to leave your house. I know, I understand that. But we got to get your weight. Come on, no, 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 don't go up. Don't go up. Okay, here you go. Here you go. I know that's scary. You're okay. Good boy. So, what we're going to do is we're going to move. his furniture so he has some place to hide if he wish and he sort of has his his scent and stuff so remember always always make your snakes feel comfortable and don't frighten them and don't upset them and they generally do real well. So now that that's done, we already know the tear weight of this can is 1.47 kilograms. So all we have to do is put that on there. So it's 2.305 kilograms with his weight. So what we have to do is, uh, is subtract that. And we have... Uh, the weight of uh, of Mr. Walsh and Wal uh, Walter Nijai. Two, three, oh five. I write it down because I have a feeble brain because I'm old and decrepit and uh, uh, you know we just uh, we just don't want to take such things. Uh, the chance. Okay. Now are you going to be a good boy or are you going to play Jack in the Box? Hi. Hi. You, you're huffing a little bit, huh? Come on. Yeah, I know, dude. You're okay. Well, come on. I want to take you out and put you, put you back where it's a little warmer, huh? Come on. 
Come on, there you go. There you go. See? You've got your stuff. You've got your furniture. There you go. We'll let you settle in for a little while and, uh, I know, I'm sorry. I have this thing for pulling sheddings off the tails. Okay, so what we'll do is since we really have an unknown entity is we're going to uh, clean uh, stuff up. I don't really have a, a formal sticker for them, but uh, Lori and I uh, know what it is. Um, so we'll let him get settled in and I'll clean this out because I have some uh, some Jameson Mambas coming, uh, some females that may already be uh, uh, bred and gravid with some eggs. So we're going to use them as that quarters as a quarantine uh, for those guys. And if they drop eggs, fantastic. If they don't, well, next year these two boneheads get their shot at them. <laughs> easy, easy. Don't be so touchy. Black Beast, you can almost never get a clean shed off of him. So, I was attempting that, but the best way to do it is occupy the pointy end with something that he's really interested in, like some food, while we <clears throat> while we gently Oh, come on, don't wrap the tail. Easy, bud. If you curl your tail, um, get ready to give me another mouse on a stick, please. I think that's not for you, so don't smack the glass. She's already had one. I mean, the Black Beast has one of the most beautiful sheds out of the, all the snakes in the collection, but it's so damn impossible to get a perfect one. There we go, bud. Now, I don't know where the uh, where the eye caps and stuff are, but that's about as uh, clean a shed as you get. Or at least I got a piece of it, and he didn't, he didn't get a piece of me. Hello, Miss Simus. I'll give you another one. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. You know, a lot of times, you know, look at me. I'm not doing this with any glasses on. So often I forget that he's a spitter. You know, I do put myself at risk. And having uh, had spray in the eyes before. Um, I assure you that's not something I like to repeat. But, you know, sometimes I just <laughs> I forget because he's just such a an easygoing guy. Out. We got you fed and shed at the same time. Uh, 
I have to admit he was a bit unnerved uh, when I uh, gently uh, grabbed him and started pulling. I'm going to need another mouse fairly quickly. Um, I started taking his shed off. Was that tasty, dude, huh? You know, because I touched him and I'm, I'm smelling of, uh, of rodent. And uh, that's not always the best uh, uh, place to be <laughs> when you're visiting snakes. You don't want to smell like your food. Enough of them think that I'm a big rat anyway. I don't even need that. Was that tasty, huh? Yes, this is for you. You can take it whenever you're ready. You ready? There you go. That's a good guy. He does get weirded out a little bit by the camera. You know, only when the only time he's ever spat or sprayed, as my friend Jim likes to call it, is when uh, he's had the camera stuffed in his face, and you know he sees this thing as a big eyeball. Okay, well, I think that's plenty for, for the Black Beast for the week. That's all. That's all. <clears throat> now, we have a Miss Simus. Um, that's very interested in something to eat. Hi there, girly. Hi, Miss Simus. How you doing? This is a Viper Keeper uh, handling the uh, the tasty morsels. Would you like that? No, yeah. Shook it off even. I don't want it that wet. Okay, now for safety reasons, we're going to shut this because rattlesnakes, vipers work on autopilot more often than not. Alright, we have. Uh, box of uh, death. Uh, they picked up at the airport a little while ago. Uh, these are two female West African green mambas. Dendroaspis uh, viridis. Uh, unfortunately, the, the ones that I've acquired captive born we're all males, um, so I've got a hold of two females. It's too late to breed, uh, breed them this year, but next year, hopefully, uh, I have two males, and hopefully they will make little mambas, because realistically, not. This year there has been very little activity out of Africa, uh, and uh, you know I am not entirely sure that uh, uh, we'll have a steady supply of of animals. Now, uh, you know, having things properly labeled is an awesome uh, thing. Um, but sometimes my pea-brained uh, homie gets a little overexcited and forgets to do such things. Uh, he was sending me up some, uh, some feeder geckos, and the box was labeled gecko, and uh, I'm unpacking, and there were other things other than uh, geckos in the order, uh, the shipment, uh, including uh, Jameson Mambas. Uh, so, uh, uh, okay, this, this box of stuff is geckos. Uh, no, I don't think it was labeled uh, anything. So I said, oh, this must be the geckos. So I slid this open and got the knife pried right open the flap, and here I'm looking eye to eye with a gaping uh, Jameson Mamba. <laughs> it's like, whoops, <laughs> wrong box. Oh, no. So, uh, we laugh, but it was like, if I would have got bit, I would have went and kicked his ass.
Hey, Joe, this is the view that I had uh, uh, when I opened the box door like this and looked in. Not very pleasant, huh? Nope. Not a very good way to meet your, your newest Mamba. Hello. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, this guy is all happy in his little hide box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slit this. Hopefully the little beggar doesn't come shooting out. And then I am going to place it. And he can use it for a hide box since he's already comfortable there. So I'm just going to pop the hatch and it can come out uh, whenever it feels like it. Now, I've had lots of, uh, lots of experience with Western Greens. Uh, let, me, let me put it all in perspective. Uh, Eastern Greens are generally the easiest to handle. Okay, and I say generally because I've had some Eastern Greens that were total nightmares. Um, you know, the Black Mambas are ones that everybody fears. Uh, rightly so, but they haven't been as nearly bad as the Jamesons, uh, which are higher on my uh, what the hell list. And Western Greens can be a real nightmare. Uh, they're arboreal, they're fast, they've got really long fangs and potent venom. A uh, friend of mine was bitten through a Midwest glove. Fortunately, he wasn't envenomated, but he was, he was bitten uh, through the glove. So that's how long and sharp their fangs are. So Western Greens are sort of psychotic. Uh, they can't be really reasoned with. Uh, Mambas will sit and look at you and figure it out. Jamesons, well, you know, Slinky, you know, and the other guys, they just want to get away from you, uh, as do most of the green Mambas. But some green Mambas will sit there and huff and puff and hiss at you. Uh, these guys are totally ballistic. It's like blowing up a balloon and letting go of it. Uh, exactly how they behave. So. Uh, we don't take them out and play with them uh, and give them a free run like we would Slinky or we don't do Mamba on a stick or anything like that. These guys are just for looking behind the glass because they're quite volatile. Now, according to the information, this is a six and a half foot blue female, which is really nice. and. You know, don't tell me that the cage is small. This is sort of a quarantine cage for them. Of course it's small. Uh, you know, I would be very, very happy uh, to get much larger cages, but you people just have to fork over the eight or nine hundred dollars for this because, you know, I don't have the budget for it right now. So, shut up and watch the program. So we're going to do this one the same way, and hopefully uh, it will go along the same lines. Uh, special thanks to, to Ray Martinez, uh, who did the packing, did a superb job from what I can see. Uh, kudos to him. Okay, if that's the only blood that I shed tonight, that's fine. I just stuck myself with the skizzers, but didn't draw blood. Well, gee, that was smart. That's why there's a blunt side of this pair of scissors. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, weapons are armed. We're on yellow alert now because although it seems to be uh, nicely encased in a box, anything could happen. Usually when it happens, 
we let the mamba go, expend energy, tire itself out, uh, and then we go after it. We don't try to stop it from escaping from the box or anything like that because it moves much quicker than we do and uh, you get, end up getting bit. So we do not try to stop them when they escape. We step back, we get the uh, gentle giant tongs, and we capture them that way because they don't hook either. They come up the hook and kiss you on the face. And you guys probably stuck up your boxes, but this will be good for a day or so. Um, we'll do this. Pop this open. Hello! Man, stuck shed. I hate stuff sheds. Now, before I put them in the cage, uh, I made sure that the screen lid was tightened down very nicely I, uh, because we don't want uh, to come in the room and see a green mamba draped across the, uh, the top of the uh, other cages. Okay, non event, but you know, that's how you do it with some reasonable level of safety. Now we'll let these guys sort of come out on their own. Uh, you know, I really hate, you know, it's nice that stuff is, you know, when it comes to tape and labels, either it's too sticky or not sticky enough. There's nothing in between. It just uh, is real annoying. If we knew where the head was, we'd maybe tickle her belly. But we're not going to do that because I don't know where the head is. Okay, so we'll move on uh, to the next uh, characters that need to be unpacked.